Hey, what's going on, champs? I'm Erin Deliosa. Welcome to an Immigrant's Life podcast, my podcast about immigrants and immigration and everything in between. Thank you for listening and downloading the show, and thank you for supporting my dad. Welcome back, Immigrant Nation. Another week, another new episode. Thank you for being here, wherever and whenever you're listening to this podcast. Your presence is much appreciated. Speaking of listening, if you want to listen to our previous episodes, we are available wherever you get your podcasts, even on YouTube. And if you want more AIL content, check our social media accounts. Our handle is at an immigrant's life. Also, as I say every week, if you or someone you know wants to be a guest on the podcast, reach out to our social media accounts that I've just mentioned just now or email us at animmigrantslife at yahoo.com. Let's connect and let's tell your beautiful story. Now, let's talk about the episode. While our guest this week grew up in a rough environment and surrounded by violence, he still didn't allow his soul to be corrupted by these outside forces. Instead, he now shares it with his family and friends and with the world through his beautiful digital arts. A very interesting conversation with a very interesting man that shows a lot of interest on different things. So I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy listening to this one. So let's get to the point. Without further ado... Let's get into the show. Isa, dalawa, tatlo. Today's guest is a prolific digital artist and an efficient submission artist. He can draw you a beautiful portrait while giving you a rear naked choke. Everyone, please welcome Drew Tak. What's up, everybody? What's up, Drew? How are you doing, my man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. Thank you for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Oh, thank you. This is it's different for me stepping out. You know, I don't. Yeah. I'm usually a quiet person. Well, nowadays I am. I mean, I talk a lot. I talk a little too much, but <laughs> but not, not lately to other people besides my kids. How so? Um, uh, I'm uh right now. Uh, I've been more focused on being a stay-at-home dad. My wife's, you know, the breadwinner right now. She's in Boston, so I'm doing everything hmm. from. You know the mommy and daddy stuff. Mm-hmm. Also, you're not working. No, I, I took about a year off um, for for she could do some, some travel assignments and uh, kind of focus on uh, things around the house, you know, and myself. And she, you know, she wanted to do this, so I supported her. Good man. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all we can do, right? Try. Yep. Just try. That's all we can do. Before we move on, why don't you tell the Immigrant Nation where they can reach you or if you want to promote anything? Uh, you can reach me at Instagram at ah, ah, Drew underscore art. That's A-H-H-D-R-U underscore art. That's on Instagram. Um, promoting wise, um, right now I'm tr- trying to give a shout out to some of my friends here in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Some uh, Asian rappers, you know, on the come up right now, BZ, uh, Westside Tone, and Momo. Um, they got a crew coming out, the Lousy Boys, um, you know, all the Laos community, Cambodian community, Filipino community over here. You know, I got nothing but love for all you guys. Um, that's pretty much it right now. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. Detroit. Were you born in Detroit? Yes. I was... Uh, what you call kind of like an anchor baby. What's that? So, <laughs> so uh, my parents came here from, you know, the refugee camp, you know, the story about the whole Khmer Rouge and, mm-hmm. you know, so as soon as, a, uh, soon as they got here, they touched down in Detroit. Um, as soon as they touched down, you know, my mom got pregnant with me and I was the first, first one born in all, out of all my relatives here in the U.S., Mm. Oh, so you're the first American? Yes, first American. Uh, no Cambodian. pressure. <laughs> <laughs> They're immigrants. I'm not. <laughs> I was exactly. the first citizen too. So, yeah. So, how was that relationship 
with your parents being immigrants and you being an American boy? Well, it, it was hard. It was very hard. Uh, you know, at the same time, as like, you're growing up here. This is all you know. So, hmm. you know, there's a lot of comparisons to – I'm the youngest too, so that made it even harder. You know, everybody hmm. thinks it's like, oh, the youngest is spoiled. Oh, he's born in this country. Uh, we had a lot of um, – you know, we came here, we weren't, you know, we were pretty poor mm. in Detroit. You know, it wasn't the best city. We, you know, there's a lot of violence, you know, my, my dad and my mom escaped violence from one country just to come here to another, you know? Mm -hmm. So adapting my mom, my mom, uh, I just remember at times that my mom was trying to like learn English by when I was learning English or to learning how to speak, you know, watching mm -hmm. Sesame Street, things like that. She would just kind of repeat the words. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. Yeah. yeah. What kind of jobs did they find initially? Initially over here, they worked um, mostly factory jobs, like from plastic manufacturers. Uh, um, my dad, my dad left when I was two. So it, oh. his, uh, he worked like, helped the donut shops and uh, remember he was you know before all that so i don't i don't know too much about my dad's work life besides he worked at a lot of donut shops mm -hmm. but so after you were born two years old he bounds yeah pretty much it's uh it's kind of sounds like that it's it's, it's kind of weird it's uh my dad wanted wanted better for us and stuff, but he suffered a lot of, uh, I say, PTSD from mm -hmm. from coming to Cambodia. When he he left when I was two, there's you know he's always felt like he was, if he was close to the family, if something if he's always close to the family, something will happen to the family. Whoa! Um, I, I don't know if did you get to check my Facebook page where I have, I kind of have a picture in my uh. The background there's a it's a black and white photo mm -hmm. it came from a, it came from the newspaper article i actually recently found about about a year ago um i was two years old and um my dad got robbed in front of my house when i was walking to go go to the store to get me milk mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm excuse me my brother was two years old i have a brother i was i was a few months old so he was he went to go get some milk and a, few, a couple guys just robbed him right you know Broad daylight too, mm. so he had that little switch in his head. He developed a drinking problem, and you know, I, I didn't find out till later on in my life I, uh, that you know the, the reason why he was, uh, you know, you don't understand. Too, I didn't understand too much of mental health. You know, I still don't. I'm trying to. Mm. Um, the PTSD was something that I, I read in his uh, records when we kind of reunited and mm. and he was telling me he's like is like, i couldn't be near you you know every time i'm close to you somebody wants to hurt you guys or somebody wants to hurt me it, it was it's very psychological for him so i don't i don't blame him or you know i don't i'm never i never held any anger because he did communicate with us i just didn't understand it till i was older mm. so but growing up you didn't feel anger towards him uh, it's, he kept, it, I did because, uh, uh whew, um, my mom has a lot of sisters in mm -hmm. Detroit and it's like, uh, she's, she's the oldest out of like nine. <laughs> so uh, all, all my aunts and stuff like that and very, everybody had different things to say for them, you know, but my sister, my oldest sister, you know, the person I love, one of the people I love the most in the world is my oldest sister. I mean, she's she always kept uh, everything true. Always told me he's like, yeah, I don't believe uh, he's he was a good man. He's like, you know, he loves you, and you know, hey, mm. you know, I was a little knucklehead too, so I did I didn't always believe things. Mm. And like, and I was like, I don't need nobody. I, I grew up thinking I was like, I don't shit, I don't need nobody, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, she's just normal teenager, you know, rebellious, and we think we're we're the toughest guy in the block, you know. Yeah, I, I like I said, I had none. Um, my sister. The funny thing is, okay, my birth date. 
Hmm. I was born on my sister's wedding day here in the U.S. Hmm. So my my sister's, you know, she's like 19 years older than me, you know. So, um, you know, my dad and he was around then and stuff. Uh, so she she did a lot to uh, kind of take care of me, and she had her own family. Um, one of my closest, uh, <laughs> I guess, I guess I could say he's like he's, my nephew is my kind of like my brother in a way. He's hmm. they, they lived. We lived different, still different worlds because he lived uh, more on the west side of uh, in the metro Detroit area, you know, and I uh, and we lived more east. So my brother, my older brother, uh, Darvu, my late brother, he, he passed away in uh, mm. 2009. Rest in peace. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, he raised pretty much, he's he raised me uh and my brother mark which is a couple of years older than me he's you know which you know my, my brother was born in a refugee camp uh, the one that's two years old me and pretty much you know just came here and then mm. <laughs> we started living here then i was born mm-hmm. all this stuff happened do you know or did you know that what kind of life did they have in cambodia yeah, my um, my sister tells me a lot. My aunt, one of my my young aunt, tells me a lot of stories. Uh, before the you know the Khmer Rouge and stuff like that, my my dad was a very educated man. Hmm. Uh, he was a Khmer Krom. so you know we have you know I, I got some Vietnamese blood in me too. Hmm. Um, they used to you know he he used to help like deliver babies and you know he was into like he was like it, trying to be like in the medical field mm. or that. So he helped a lot of people, you know? Oh, so he was a midwife. Yeah, pr- pretty much. Mm. How about I, mom? I, my mom, uh, she's, <laughs> she wasn't much of a worker. She was kind of, my dad kind of, uh, pampered her and stuff like that. She was, uh, you know, she was also the oldest daughter. So, you know, she's, you know, my mom, didn't get her hands dirty too much. No, then she had, you know, my sister wasn't, she had my sister at a young age. So my sister was always working hard. Uh, even in Cambodia, she was, you know, to, for my older brothers to take care, she walked miles holding buckets of water just to make sure they get a clean bath. And <laughs> That's so my life why, growing up. <laughs> yeah, this, this is why my sister is like, I, I, I could literally talk shit to anybody. Mm-hmm. My sister could just give me one little look and I, I just had to sit straight. You know, she, <laughs> she's not a mean person, but if she, if I know that she has to get mean, it was like, Oh shit, I did something wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that, that's, that's why I love her so much. Um, and like I said, she, she has two sons. So they're, they're close to my age. Um, my nephew, uh, Matt, he's, you know, like a little brother to me. So and we, we fight, we grew up and mm. we still, we still talk shit. And you know, it's like, I think I just talked shit to him like the other day. <laughs> it's all mm. I love, you know? So your sister, she became your mom essentially. No, just kind of, I would say aunt. Cause we didn't live together. Oh, okay. But the person that really, I would say would be my parent in a way. Cause uh, my mom, during my early ages, uh, she worked so much. She never really ever did it, you know, was around because she was always working so hard. Was my mm. brother, uh, Darvut, the one that I, my late brother once passed away. Mm. But uh, he had a disability. The Kind of the main reason why we came to the U.S. Um, he, had a, he had kidney failure. Um, so pretty much the first experience in the U.S. was at a hospital mm. here in Detroit. And, um, yeah, yeah, he is, he, we grew up, you know, me and my brother, Mark, pretty much the, the one that's a couple of years older than me, just, uh, pretty much we grew up in a hospital waiting room, like <laughs> while my mom worked, he's, we always waited for him to be on dialysis or Ooh. surgery. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was pretty rough. That's what I was saying. It was like, yeah, us still adapting. Okay. I, I have the American title, but, you know, everybody else in the family is still learning, you know. 
Yeah. Did you feel like there's a barrier between you and the family being because you're an American boy and they're still trying to adapt? Yes. Uh, yes, because there's, you know, one thing there's, you know, we got a little bit more privileges and stuff. I think my, um, I think I was four, four years old, four or five years old. I, I believe um, uh, they got their citizenship. No, no, I she no, was. I'm sorry. I, I was in first grade, so I had to be like seven. Yeah, six, seven. Yeah, six, seven. And um, that's when my brother and my mom and all of them got their citizenship here in the U.S. Mm. And, uh, you know, they, it was a proud moment. I, I still remember that day. But, um, yeah, we I always had a lot of comparisons and stuff like that. I was always called spoiled and stuff like that. <laughs> You know, I was like, oh, I ain't spoiled. I was, I told my brother, I was like, I'm wearing the I'm wearing the shit you wore yesterday. How am I spoiled? You know, <laughs> why would they think that you're spoiled? Do you guys live in the same house, same, you know, family? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I think my brother, um, my oldest brother, gave me a lot of attention too for being the youngest, and uh, you know, my father being absent. So mm. he, you know, but was it a good attention though? Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he was he was great. He was uh, he let me be a kid and stuff like that. And same time, I felt he was in he was in a lot of pain pretty much twenty four seven. My childhood was not normal. Like, uh, I mean, growing up with somebody that had a disability, hmm. and you know, you got one brother that's two years just slightly like two years older than you, and all we know is we come home from school, you know. We we don't even get able to get a dress. We had to grab some eat, and we had to go with them. So this is uh, three three to four times a week for dialysis. Wait in the lounge, you know. Uh, Waiting in the hospital lounge until he gets out. Then we go home. It's very late, and you know we eat our eggs and rice, our noodles. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Did he eventually be got better, or it was just a nonstop dialysis? It, it was nonstop. Um, at one time, there was a period he was lo home longer, and uh, he got a uh, kidney donated to him, mm. but it didn't it didn't work out. Oh. But he was home for a while. Um, he spent more time with us, and um, you know, but at the same time, me and my brother by then we were a little older. You know, we were probably in our preteens. Mm. So you know. If uh, we we didn't have to go to the doctors too much with our the hospital lounge too much and wait for them, it's either we're there, we go to the library, or try to play with friends in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my brother that was two years older than me. He was, you know, he he had to grow up pretty quick because, um, you know, we he took care of me too. Just being mm -hmm. two years old, we, you know, age six, we're already, you know, making food for ourselves and things like that yeah because mom's working like three jobs probably seven uh, she was yeah she was working well one job but it was overtime you know overtime nobody over here is like you know i i think overtime's kind of bullshit <laughs> but, uh is like um i'd rather spend time with my kids right but the mentality over here is just like you know my mom never let us go hungry never never once so she's she did all that she could, you know, and mm -hmm. then she got injured at work uh, when I was a teen. So mm -hmm. she stopped working and yeah, she was collecting disability checks for a bit. She's okay now? Uh, she's older now. My mom's a lot older. She's, uh, no, she, she's comfortable in life. Okay, good. Good to hear. So, so growing up, were there some sort of relationship with dad or dad is just out of the picture at all? My dad probably called um, probably once a month, hmm. and there there's times that it went longer. But you know, I, I think more of my uh, my teenage life it was more longer. Hmm. I mean, he came to visit to we stay at my sister's house. I bond, you know, we'll bond and do things. Where did he go? Like, was he like the next state or? Uh, he went all the way to. Uh, he was over in Oakland, California. Oh, uh, he ran uh, away. away. He had family over there, though. It's just my mom never wanted to go over there because her family's over here. So it kind of, uh, kind of put a drift there. Uh, hmm. 
But now you have relationship with him. Um, my father passed away in two thousand two thousand four. Sorry to hear that. But before he passed away, was there? Did you become closer, or it was just it was too far apart that there's no point? Uh no. I kind of um I got to know him before um I spent a lot of time with him his final final days in life. Hmm. It was uh two thousand four. I kind of uh my mom went to Cambodia to go visit and I was working and all of a sudden uh, my sister gave me a call. I was like, Oh, dad's sick. We're going to, you know, he has cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, got a call from my cousin uh, over there and he was explaining to us. And I was like, well, if I don't go now, I ain't, I ain't going to, I ain't going to know shit about him. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, I don't, you know, every negative thought I had to, you know, I, I had to have some closure. That's good. So I kind of went there as, you know, plus, you know, support of my sister. Mm -hmm. She's like, so, okay. Yeah. So you had a, you know, not a regular life and it was hard. There's pretty much no parental support. And I'm sure you, you start hanging around with the kids in the neighborhood. Did you get into any gangs or you try to stay in school? Uh, <laughs> school was... Um, one thing is uh, my my kid life it was pretty horrible. School life over here is like my mom. We lived uh, one mile north of Detroit because she had to get out of Detroit. She wanted it better for us, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he was like, "Okay, she wanted better for us. We got about, we kind of lived in the ugliest house in the neighborhood. You know, <laughs> paint chipped off. I remember we had." All of us brothers and, and uh, you know, at one point we had cousins and stuff like that in a two-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. you, you, you could tell, like, uh, you know, any vision of you, you think of an ugly house, the broken fence, the cracked windows. It looks like almost like it's abandoned. <laughs> um, that was the house. And uh, then I, I lived in, a, you know, just being a mile up from Detroit, it became more of a white neighborhood. So I got used, we got used to living in a, you know, a black neighborhood, you know, and, you know, I, I think my brothers got more fights over there, but, you know, I was still a kid. So we moved to a white neighborhood. Then I ended up getting more fights because these kids are, you know, they got better shoes than you and better. <laughs> so, and they only look at you like, you know, like, oh, he's Chinese, a little Chinese boy or whatever. I'm like, Dude, I'm too dark to be Chinese. <laughs> One thing, <laughs> but uh, he's like, "Oh, I bet he knows kung fu." And I was like, you know, I was getting, I was, I was getting pissed off. I was, I, you know, well, kind of proved them wrong. And you know, I just got my ass kicked. I didn't know no kung fu. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, that was that was the lessons of life, you know. And I, I kind of didn't have during that time. I didn't have too many other minorities besides. Uh, you know, I have one Mexican friend and one uh, one black friend and stuff like that. It just <laughs> it seems like you kind of gravitate towards the minority during yeah. that time. You yeah, know. you know, you have something in common. You guys are all oppressed. <laughs> yeah, during that, it's just like we're just a mile up too. It's just like if we crossed the road, you know, the whole the whole demographic's different. It's 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 crazy. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, you, you probably hear stories of eight mile. That's that's where it was. Hmm. So. so, with the ass kicking that you got when growing up, is that why you become a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu purple belt? Uh, no, no. Um, I I just I talked a lot of shit. <laughs> One thing is like uh, I'm I had a lot of bigger uh, brothers and stuff like that. So I thought I was like I don't, you know. Ass kicking ain't nothing from somebody else, but you get your ass kicked from your brothers, you know. Mm. <laughs> One thing is, I was like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, you, that didn't hurt much, ain't nothing. Um, <laughs> you know, I just don't tell my brothers because it's just like, I was like, okay, oh, I'm just getting my ass kicked more. It's like, you gonna let those guys beat your ass? Like, <laughs> get out of here and go back and beat them up. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, how do you get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and stuff. Uh, during my teenage years, uh, before I kind of occasionally did kickboxing and stuff, because my brother was, uh, uh, my brother would, uh, 
you know, my late brother when that took care of us, he was highly obsessed with Bruce Lee. So we 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 all watched every martial arts movie, all these Jet Lees. We even had the the Khmer dub <laughs> where, <laughs> where, where they're speaking uh where they're speaking Cambodian and stuff. Um so I, we had obsessed with that and you know playing video games, everything involved fighting from uh, we played Street Fighter two a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mortal Kombat, you know all those. So martial arts was in there. I, 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 I never went, never thought about grappling. I was always the scrawny kid. So my, my brothers were athletes. My, uh, my brother uh, Mark, he was always, he could do anything with a ball. He was, he was playing football in high school, basketball. But me, I, like I said, I talked too much shit. I didn't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it was just not me. I was, I was scrawny, and so. I I got into that for a bit, but um, then I stopped. So I, I think I did about like, kickboxing for like two years. It was uh, kickboxing and uh, Teng Sudo. Uh, then I didn't get back into it till my adult life uh, with my daughter because um, I started. Uh, I, I quit smoking. I, I, I was smoking cigarettes since I was twelve years old. <laughs> it's to help. Jesus yeah so um when my daughter was born you know it was one of those things she's coughing i smell like cigarettes my wife hated it mm. at the time you know her dad smoked so she did she hated it twice as much <laughs> and i kind of uh my daughter kind of just told me it was like hey i was like dad you need to quit smoking and i was like oh. i just kind of looked at it i was like oh shit i, I do need to quit smoking <laughs> and i kind of uh went through that like I quit smoking. I did some acupuncture, and uh, you know, I went, went crazy for two weeks. Then I finally was able to just cut it out. But I, I found myself with these weird habits. Like I kept going outside. Mm. Like, like <laughs> so, I, I started picking up like running mm. and stuff like that. I was like, I was like, okay, this is this is cool working out. But you know, muscles. Well, Muscles are good, you know, health is good, but if you can't apply it to anything, it's like, okay, I signed up for, um, you know, I signed up for uh, some kick or kickboxing classes and boxing classes, but I, I started sparring against some of these MMA, MMA guys, and uh, one took me down, and I, I couldn't do shit. <laughs> so um, I got into that, I started getting heavy into it. I was like, and you know, ever since I've been on and off, you know, I'm still here. I guess. <laughs> grappling how many is very important. Sorry. Oh, I think grappling is very important. You got to mm. got to know how to. You got to know how to wrestle if you're going to yeah. defend yourself. Got to. I know. I've been thinking of signing up too. I've been so lazy. I've been oh, thinking. Really? Of... Uh, I, I did uh, a lot of Filipino martial arts too. I did. Uh, I did Kali uh, Yao Yan. Too mm. so I, I love the Filipino martial arts a lot. There's so much to it, you know. Another thing, yeah, Bruce Lee was big into that too. Yeah, well, he was being on everything except yeah. for grappling. Yeah, he was he was slowly getting into it before he uh, passed away. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. was a story of him uh, getting into this wrestler and he couldn't do anything. Yeah, but, but he he, you know, I, I go by his philosophies and. <laughs> like I, I shared my obsession my brother had with him. I, I still have, you know, we look around the room. I got, I got Manny Pacquiao on, on one wall. I got Bruce Lee and some joke calendar of Chuck Norris over here. <laughs> Chuck <laughs> Norris, bro, legend, yeah. yo. Yeah. Yeah. I tried, um, what do you call this? Uh, Kyokushin when I was younger. Uh, Kyokushin karate? Yeah. Yeah, I did that for, I don't know, a few weeks, I guess. But I grew up poor, so I had to starve myself at school so I could save money so I can sign up for the class. You can do that for a few weeks, and then that's it. Then you realize, you know what? I need to eat. <laughs> I, but I yeah. always wanted it. I always yeah. loved it because, I don't know, I, I just enjoyed the discipline. And I was, you know, when I was younger, I was very flexible, so I can do yep. the splits and stuff. Yeah. So I enjoyed it a lot, but then again, like I said, we're poor. We cannot afford it. But I've been meaning to go 
try there's a um, Gracie Barra uh, Baha Baha how do, you, how do you say it? It's like Gracie Baha yeah Baha. Baha. Yeah. something like that and yeah, they're, they have it here close to my house so maybe this uh, this summer I'm gonna try because I usually play basketball but since I start playing that I'm like okay I need to ha do something oh yeah yeah it's you know we gotta stay moving we gotta keep moving somehow you know just yeah I mean I work out every day I, I lift weights but I like what you said muscle's good but it doesn't if you can't use it choking someone oh you there's oh, there's a lot of muscle heads that come in here too that kind of you know it's just kind of like an internet you see a lot of videos of these big old muscle heads that come in the gym thinking that oh like oh you know i got in a bar fight or whatever and you know i i seen them getting whipped around by these like younger younger like women stuff like that you know it's <laughs> it, it, it's it's crazy i, I even you know, I even had my experience with a few of the guys too. Just like, uh, like yeah, it's like you know, I got a lot of bar fights. And I was like, I haven't lost a fight in my life. It's like I think you know I could get into this. And I was like, oh, that's cool. You know, then they the they don't come to gym. Him. Yeah, and they don't come in the next day uh, or mm. next week. They just quit. There's there's a few I think you know that ended up being really good. Mm. You know, it, it's humbling. It's very humbling. It's it's, I believe. Uh, it helped me find my peace. You know, hmm. one thing I, I have, uh, kind of have like ADHD. So this way training is like, I, I, I have so much things running in my mind. It, you know, martial arts helped it. Hmm. So. Yeah. Cause the most important thing is not get choke. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I, I, I'm not saying I don't get choked. I get, I get choked probably. I got choked earlier. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things is like, you learn, you know, you're, you're not invincible. You know? mm. And yeah, you, definitely. you also learn that, you know, it's easy to hurt people. So, mm. How long have you been doing it? Uh, solid jujitsu. Solid jujitsu, probably. Uh, okay. I started, I think, uh, about six years. And uh, you're a purple belt. That's pretty good, man. Uh, yeah. Then uh, there's a lot of people that, I trained with from the beginning that are ready black belts and mm. stuff. I, I took a lot of time off, you know, mm. it was like, uh, of working travel career, uh, family life, you know, yeah. financial stuff. It's like, okay, I had to make a sacrifice. Um, I can't do this if my daughter wants to, you know, do her activities in school and things like that. I got, mm. so it's now life. Yeah. yeah. We got to find ways to invest in ourselves, though, too. That's important. So I, I kept moving. Like I said, it's like I'm not doing that. I had, you know, I got my own home, home gym, hmm. boxing bag and stuff. I still meet up with, you know, sounds kind of weird. Yeah, I meet up some <laughs> with some of the guys and we grapple. And, you know. That's cool. Do you roll with the gi or no gi? I I, I do both. I, I, I To be honest, I I prefer no gi. Hmm. you know gi is cool there's so much things gi, gi if you want to learn self-defense yes be be with the gi because you know there's a lot of people everybody wears clothes <laughs> you know <laughs> everybody wears like winter times and stuff like that got somebody's coat you can learn choke somebody with their jacket or uh, <laughs> or you know just hold them down better using their art of clothes um I, I like doing the no gi and stuff like that it's just uh it, there's a lot more rustling into it Hmm. What kind of uh, who's your uh, sensei for your jujitsu? You know how they're like planet. Uh, oh, the, like the legacy. Yeah, uh, no, uh Well, we went through Machado. Mm, okay. The Machado brothers. Uh, uh, the original gym was Carlos Machado. Then I had uh, another one. Um, uh, the Higgin Machado, Carlos Machado, then um, uh, Papa John, uh, John Gorman from another gym. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was a legacy there from the organization. Okay. Do you enroll your kids with uh, jujitsu or? My two youngest ones, uh, they're not, uh, my daughter, still too young to grasp it. My uh, oldest child, she's a teenager now. I mm. uh, I think I kind of burnt her out of it <laughs> uh, too much. Uh, I I I feel bad because it's like yeah, I pushed her 
a lot. She did karate, she did jujitsu, and you know now now she's a teen, hmm. you know, doing her teen thing. But she still can choke. I don't even know anymore. It was like she, all, all my child's personality is different. My oldest one, she's a uh, very sweet kind. Isn't really. I still to this day haven't seen her angry in my life. She doesn't get angry. She's either happy or sad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my middle child is the exact opposite. She's never. She's only happy or angry. <laughs> <laughs> Then my Never said. Just, no, she's just happy or angry. She's like, you know, I, I believe I she will do well because she's a very aggressive one. Hmm. You know, my youngest, other, you know, just still early as tell. He's a sweet little boy and just kind of, <laughs> it, he's more just kind of a crybaby. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure out a nice way to say it, but yeah, he's a big crybaby. He's the, you know, he's the baby. Yeah, you know he gets spoiled. Yeah, he, he's he's with me more too. So okay. I'm, I show him more affection too. Do you love being a dad? Oh yes, it's it changed my life. You know, I bet you could say the same thing. You know, it's it's life changing. You straighten up. They're the best teachers that you could you could ever ask for. Mm -hmm. They um, don't have to say nothing. Yeah, you know, it's like. The habits, your bad habits. If you had bad habits before being a father, you know, or even a husband and stuff like that, you learn to kill it easier with them because you got somebody else to live for, you know. Mm -hmm. and before it's, you know, it's just you. you. You don't give a shit. It's like, yeah, you know, shit happens is me. <laughs> yeah. But now, now I'm living for somebody else. So I got to stay healthy. I got to stay mentally healthy. I got, you know, I got to keep busy. I got to be example, you know, it's, it's it's a lot, it's a lot to be a dad, you know, it's a lot to be a parent, a lot to be a mom, you know, it's just all around, just like, you know, I, I, you, know, you, you probably agree with me. You know, we will give up our lives for our kids in an instant if I had mm. to. hundred percent, hundred percent. I love being a dad. I love what you said that they made you, they made you a better person. You know, it thought it, it teaches you a lot because you cannot say to them, "Don't smoke cigarette," while you're smoking a cigarette. Yeah, you cannot tell them something bad that they're doing while you're doing the same thing. Yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, you just don't want to be a hypocrite. I mean, regardless, we are in so many ways, but you know, it's it, my kid. There's you always, you always see a little bit of your of yourself and each kid. So it's like, uh, you know, you tend to get, sometimes I tend to get overprotective. I was like, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, you know, pretty proud of uh, all of them. My oldest is a teenager. She's going through her life, but uh, you know, friends and, you know, the whole teen thing. It's just like, <laughs> I just, it, it's, but it's better than what I had. Hmm. And I, I believe I, I need to shut shut my mouth a lot because I'm doing something my parents hate. Uh, my, my parents did to me. I hated was compare things. You know, I got to stop comparing my my growing my life growing up to the hers. Mm -hmm. you know, like, well, when I was younger, it's like you know, it's like hey, you have it a lot easier than me. I got to. Those are words I I stop myself from saying because it's like uh, you know. <laughs> It was. She's not doing these things by choice. It's <laughs> you know. Hmm. We just had uh, different luck in life, you know. Yeah, I I say that I had a cross to bear, big or small. That's my cross, and my kids has the cross to bear, big or small. That's not my business. It's their cross to bear. Yeah. I'm sure it's harder for you cause since you're a stay-at-home dad. Uh. Uh, my kids are very clingy towards me. Uh, like right now, I I have to, I did, <laughs> I had to give them their uh, tablets, and it was like, okay, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, other ones in uh, her room cussing and playing video games right now too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, there's there's a lot. Uh, I mean, I only did this 
for a year. Uh, this is this is different. I'm used to being active. You know, mm. my wife. Um, you know, there was time I worked two jobs. And, you know, put her through uh, nursing. You know, we all worked hard together. Um, you know, my like I said, there's a big age gap between my youngest or my oldest child and uh, my middle child. There's like uh, 10 years right there. Woo. Yeah. So, you know, I had her. We had her at a uh, young age. So how young? Uh, well, early, early 20s, about 23. My wife was uh, 19. That's a- so. <laughs> My boy got the game. <laughs> no, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, she, you know, I've, I, I have, uh, I never, I never consider myself like one of those guys that kind of like brag about like women or anything like that. Or it's hmm. like I, I respect women highly. Like I said, it's like the per- people, person I fear the most in my life. Like I said, I, I respect my sister more than anybody else. She's hmm. strong. My mom raised me and stuff. Uh, you know, and my brothers and stuff like that. So I, I have, I got to give nothing but respect to women. I, you're not going to hear me referring to some of like, oh, look at that bitch. You know, it's like, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, me and my wife joke around and stuff like that. It's like, oh, that girl's kind of bitchy, but that's it. I, but I'll never straight up, you know, use that, you know, word. Bitch are, I, I was more, I guess, more the softer out of all my friends. All my friends are all like, a little different you know a lot of them are players and i was more of the softer one i guess mm. I, I still get teased about it <laughs> but that, that's how that's how i just thought it's like you get, gotta respect them man because they're the ones that brought us into the world more <laughs> yeah you're a gentleman i i try to be it's like I, you know I, like i said i talk a lot of shit <laughs> so <laughs> there, there's there's times it's just like uh i could be blunt or something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I have a, like I said, it's it's one of those things I've, I got a lot of love for people, and I, I try to keep it that way. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I'm very overprotective of my people, too. So it's like, you ever talk about shit about my friends, whatever, it's like, you ain't in my circle, you know, you better show, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how. You better know how to stop a take down. <laughs> yeah the art that you started the how do, how do you say adru art yeah it, it's you know like my it's like it's kind of a rude way to kind of like you use the word ah into a name and stuff like that so it's like you know like uh you know people just sometimes just, i just call refer to myself like i drew <laughs> mm. you know what does it mean do, it's just my, you know, my name's Drew. So, like, like I said, it's a rude way of saying I drew. And then, oh, okay. Yeah, and, and it was just, uh, it was more of a gamer tag I used to use when I was, you know, playing video games and stuff like that. So I just kept it. And, mm. you know, I had other nicknames growing up, you know, from other friends. It was like, uh, you know, they used to call me Droopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I kind of like the cartoon, but I was a little scrawny guy. You know, I had... I smoked a lot of weed, so I drew a lot <laughs> <laughs> during that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so these, these are my uh, my uh, my Laos brothers. They they gave me that nickname. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. How would you describe the art that you create? The art I create, I used to draw a lot of just fan art before, mm. and I was drawing trying to draw celebrities and stuff like that. It's just like uh, but. It, I, I couldn't take it no personal. It's like it's like I feel like I wasn't getting better. Hmm. So I started using uh, faces uh, and the life a likeness of uh, close friends and family. So I experimented a lot using my my kids and wife's photos. So you you'll see. I mean, I got I got a few things I'm about to post up to of my wife and you know, mm-hmm. in, in different positions. I I was into to keep myself out of trouble. You know, it didn't really work, but, <laughs> but I, I during I grew up re- trying to read comic books, mm. and I always copied uh, you know like stuff from X Men, and, and that's how I learned how to draw like the body work and noses and faces. So also, you self taught. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I, I, I just, a lot of times, you know, I told you like, you know, I, we spent a lot of time in a in waiting. 
the waiting lounges at hospitals and stuff like that. I had nothing else to do. You know, we didn't, you know, we didn't have a tablet or phone that time. So, so what are you going to do? You, you got pieces of paper, you know, and you just draw. So hmm. I, I've, I've always drew when I was a little kid. And then I, till I became more of a adult, I kind of stopped. Hmm. You know, just everybody's like, oh, that's stupid. It's a waste of time. You know, so, so, um, and I actually, to be honest with you, I just started picking up the pencil about, again, about f- three or four years hmm. now. And it's, and it's all because of my daughter, she's, you know, she's really good. And I, I don't, you know, I've been investing in her. She has all the, you know, it, it's something she loves to do. It's how she escapes. I don't, you know, if I, I think that's how, why I don't see her mad because <laughs> hmm. she, she, finds a way to escape on uh she's out of doodling on her sketch pad or you know drawing on the computer and and she's teaching me a lot of things too recently so i, I can't say, I, I gotta take that back saying that i was like oh it's self-taught now i learned a lot from her and you know from tiktok videos instagram okay but did you try painting before i did i used to paint a lot when i was uh in my uh high school years hmm. so you know that that was something that kind of helped me with uh, a lot of the digital art hmm. because it's like you know you're drawing is drawing in the drawing and painting it's a little two difference because you know when it comes to painting you you understand layers better you know because hmm. when it comes to digital art you know this you work with so many different layers you know and and the awesome thing about digital art is that you could, you know, you can always go back. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, as for like canvas art and stuff like that, you mess up. It's really, <laughs> you can't do too much. Mm-hmm. Definitely. What's your creating process? How do you, if you think of a, a topic or a subject, do you sit down and spend time and really work on it? Or it's a spur of the moment? I don't know if I would say spare in the moment or yeah, should there ain't no ritual. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's funny thing is okay. Uh, like I told you, I have an ADHD in a way, so I I take a lot of uh, cannabis. <laughs> Sativa kind of gets my mind going, stuff like that. It keeps my, but when I draw, when I draw, I got a story in my head when I'm drawing. Hmm. You know, everything is like, okay, uh, a lot of the art you see and stuff like that, I'm, I'm drawing, it's like, okay, the person's doing this, you know, kind of have a, I kind of have like a movie going on in my head and, and just helps, you know, or I get inspired something that just kind of sticks in my mind. It just like, you know, like, like recently I did a lot of things because my mom was kind of like, uh, she collected a lot. She was a big she was the movie lady for she did she had like all the Cambodian karaoke DVDs and stuff like that. So <laughs> I, I have a lot of a vision of those covers, uh, like the old classic covers or the modern like from the DVD karaoke, this video CD, hmm. you know, etc. Just like so. Uh, right now, I've, I've, in the next few days, I'll probably release uh, put it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah you focus on uh, Cambodian art, Cambodian uh, uh, graphics. I would say it, it actually helps me connect. It was like, um, believe it or not, it was like I got had more Cambodian pride growing when I became an adult. Hmm. You know, I, I grew up with many different races. Uh, you know, the Asian races over here is uh, the big population in the Metro Detroit area is Hmm. And uh, a lot of my friends were Hmong. Uh, a lot of my friends, my closest friends, were, you know, one of my best friends is Hmong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, then I had a lot of Laos friends. But uh, and so I was, I'm gonna say I'm more of the outcast. Mm-hmm. And so, so I didn't really talk too much about you know my pride and try to get too much into my roots because you know it's like, you know, I I didn't have too much. You know, and it, I kind of felt like the outcast all my life. You know, other Cambodians don't want to hang out with me because you know, we we had a, we had a good Cambodian amount of groups. You know, I, a lot of cousins too, but um, I just felt, I you know, I was an outcast. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So you were ashamed of being Cambodian growing up? Uh, to a, a certain point in my life, yes, I was like, but I only still claimed it. I never said I was anything else. Mm. You know, it's it was just one of those things. It's like uh, I believe uh, if it wasn't for you know getting to know my uh, what I say, I'm I'm thankful. Why I think earlier in the beginning of uh, the show, I gave my shout out to uh, all the communities over here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like uh, the Laos community. Uh, is it because they? They showed me a lot of love, and they like my brothers. Uh, yeah, my my brothers in Detroit. You know, my big brothers. They actually treated me like a real brother. You know, they, they showed me a lot about their culture and stuff, and told me a lot about my own culture, and it got me more interested in it and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, I I still thankful thankful I got to know them. You know, they they helped me toughen up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I, yeah, no. I was looking at your art. I was just crawling at and mes- mesmerized by the beauty of them. But there's one that I saw that really caught my eye. It's it's a it's a drawing of a samurai, and it's black oh. and white. Oh yeah, a lot of people wanted me to do more of that. That was almost, dude. I think that took me about. It, that was a real quick drawing. <laughs> I, I didn't even think it was anything. I, then uh, I just kind of posted it up. It was one of the drawings. I was like, oh, let's, let's see. And uh, you know, a lot of people are now asking me. I was just, I, I didn't, I didn't think. I thought it was a piece of shit. <laughs> that <laughs> was beautiful, man. Uh, yeah, I love it. Like you know, martial arts. Kind of loved the whole samurai and ninja stuff. So, mm. and uh, yeah, that was. <laughs> I didn't really think anybody would like that. Oh, it was. It, I. I, I like your art, I do, but that one really caught my eye. I'm like, whoa, this one's cool. I love how it's the person is walking away from something. Mm-hmm. I love the the backdraft. Yeah, I, I was I was doing a lot of those things from the backside, showing people walking. Uh, um, well, one of my processes uh, with now with digital art, uh, getting to know the layers, I I have a I work on the backgrounds separately i work on a lot of the backgrounds uh, a lot of people don't notice there's going to be a lot of uh if you look at a lot of things a lot of these backgrounds are recycled i uh, end up changing the color around taking a few things out and you know then blending in the the foreground with it mm. you know and I you know, if it, it doesn't it, it just it's just a lot of playing around and combining different backgrounds uh it, there is a lot of times i do one complete, you know, majority like just one complete layer. Mm-hmm. You know, but but it, 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 to me, I learned when I do that, it, it's harder to go back and fix mistakes or yeah, you know, it, it it just it's just easier working on multiple layers. Mm-hmm. Another one that I like is Mo the Night Nurse. Oh, uh, my my wife has tons of stories and. You know, she, I know you're you're filming. You you got to know a lot of nurses. <laughs> so, <laughs> so so these stories, I was trying to make more relatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was, it was a joke. Um, and I was trying to practice uh, doing a comic. You know, uh, I the, why I started all this stuff. Um, why I even started art page? Mm. Um, I had an idea a few years ago. I was with a friend, we were trying to make a, a comic, like a digital, digital comic, a web comic of a, like a cartoon character, like a little cannabis buds. Mm. And, and, um, you know, it was, was going to be like a comedy kind of like, uh, kind of like South Park ish type comedy and, you know, their lives and trying to fit in. And we were calling, I was calling it barely legal buds because, <laughs> you know, they're trying to, they're trying to fight for to be accepted, not mm. as a drug. So I like it. Uh, yeah, and uh, he's he, this is an old coworker, so he ended up having a couple babies, and I uh, waited too long, and I kept just doodling stuff. And you know, he was he was a better artist on paper, and I I couldn't I couldn't 
and he had more experience doing this stuff. So mm-hmm. I couldn't wait for him anymore. As I was like, you know, pretty much as like, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna do it myself. I'm gonna try to figure out how to do this. So you know, I I, I get obsessed with things when I want to do something bad enough. I get obsessed with. It. Mm. Uh, you know, I sitting there figuring out, watching YouTube videos or whatever, <laughs> playing with the program. You know, just zoning out like my whole nothing was going on in my world besides focusing on how to get better at that. Mm. Yeah. I wish I could apply that to everything else, but <laughs> it's it's only when it comes to obsession. It's like I, I feel like I, I could get better at something. Yeah, but it doesn't make you you if you can yeah. focus on everything else. Yeah. You know, it's like when I say sometimes like I wish I could fix an engine because I can't fix an engine. I don't know if you do, but. But no. I'm good at everything else. Yeah, it's still it, things like trivial things. I can remember it. Uh, that's my thing. I've I'm a technical person, hmm. but you know, I, I worked. Uh, you know, a lot of I, I fixed a lot of things. But when it comes to a car, uh, good luck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I'm not a car. My brothers are all my brothers are car guys. Mm-hmm. That's the funny thing is I just, you know, I, I could take apart a computer or even like a, you know, switch like boards and, like, you know, solder wires and, you know, all the minor small electrical things mm. I'm good at. But when it comes to a car, I, I just, yeah, I, 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 I just, that or just, I don't really have an interest in it. Yeah, I think it's that because I did try. Trust me, I tried. <laughs> It's just, this is not me. This is not for me, you know? Yeah. And I just like, okay, I'm just going to let real men take care of this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing is like, I was like, oh, this stuff's a little, uh, yeah, I, I can't trust myself experimenting with it because I got to need, I'm going to need to drive tomorrow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I remember one of my cars needed the, to, needed the headlight to be changed. So I said, you know what? I'm going to man up. I'm going to change it. Bro, I spent like, I don't know, three hours. I was cursing the <laughs> goddamn thing, bro. I didn't even done it. I didn't even do it. I called my brother-in-law like, yo, come over, fix this thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I have to do. I, I, I would call uh, one of my friends and stuff like that and, you know, buy him some beer. And <laughs> exactly. You know, it's easy. It's a body moment. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think digital art will replace physical paintings? Uh, nah. nah, I just think they're two separate worlds in a mm. way. I, I don't think any art replaces any other art. Mm. It's just how the artists, you know, when, when they get used to a tool, you know, it's just like, like, like anything. It's like, I'm trying to, you know, not all digital artists are going to be good on murals uh, things on canvas live things and stuff like that we're always going to need we're always going to need these people who could sketch things and stuff like that digital art you know there's you got to have you know going to be on the computer you know i i draw a lot on my phone and stuff like that but we're going to need copies and stuff like that you know it, it's it's just like saying you know it, same thing with like a lot of things we write and stuff like that you know our you know, ebooks replacing normal books. Hmm. You know, I, 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 I hate ebooks. <laughs> it's, it's just easier for me just to uh, keep my place and just, you know, and then, then there's audio books, you know, just like, like I said, they're all separate worlds. It's more how the user uses the tool. Hmm. You know? Love it. I know, I'm sure that you have seen and heard about the AI arts. What's yeah, your opinion uh, about that? Um, at first, I was kind of a hater, <laughs> and uh, but uh, Sokai is uh, your recent guest. Uh, My boy, I love him. His his stuff is amazing and stuff like that. And it's and it's not a hundred percent AI. He does a lot of uh, you know the small things. It looks like a live magazine and stuff like that. Mm. Like, is that a real person? You know, <laughs> a lot a, a lot of times I ask is like you know. Uh, his his art is really really good it's like uh and i've seen a lot of other people and stuff like that i think if you re- rely constantly on one thing 
I, you can't really be the artist. You know, hmm. you, you could do a lot of things, you know, like these people like taking photos and stuff like that, you know, how people edited them and stuff. That's an art itself, you know? Um, but if you just snap a picture of a scene, scenery, like, Oh, this, this is nice. I'm putting it up, you know, <laughs> of, there, there's so much to photography alone. You know, it's like, mm. you know, the angles, the lighting. And, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's how people use the tool. AI, if you use it as a tool, go for it. I mean, because it's still, you still need somebody to make those uh, those input or those prompts, and um, you know, and there's a lot of it's. Just, we can't get mad. It's trying to find ways to make life easier. Mm. You you also do custom art, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've uh, done recently. Uh, there's a few. Uh, I hate doing but at the same time i like the reaction after i've been doing um art for people like you know they lost somebody hmm. it was like i i had a, a friend in the Hmong community uh one of his um uh, his mother-in-law passed away and niece so i've i did a i, I kind of he sent me some pictures i kind of try to recreate the face hmm. uh, i I I never I I never seen what they look like. Or he didn't have too many pictures, so I try to recreate that. Hmm. Uh, you know, it, like like all my stuff, I put when it comes to uh, why I, I use faces because it's very personal. Hmm. And th- when it comes to something like that, it was super personal because you get these faces stuck in your head that you don't know. In a way, it's like feeling like there's a ghost in your head. You know, but you know, I got a good reaction out of. Uh, uh, his wife and him and the family, you know, they're like, Oh my God, I love it. And stuff like that. And, you know, I give, give him a shout out. Um, and I did that a few times now. Uh, I, I know it's very, uh, in a weird way, like I said, it, it sticks in your head. Hmm. You know, when I'm doing work with living people and stuff like that, why I choose the people I have because they're, you know, they're close to me. So I, in ways, you know, a lot of my close, like friends or, you know, their wives and them couples. Uh, I, I had one, uh, re- recently, um, there's a, one of my, one of my best friends, uh, Jay and May, they, there's a picture of, a uh, there's a Hmong, Hmong one, uh, May, she got, Somebody in the monk community over here loved that so much that they actually got put it in a gala. <laughs> wow! So that I felt like that was well, like wow, somebody actually likes my stuff, and uh, you know, I get, give her credit. She's like, "What me? My face?" <laughs> you know, and and that's the the real reaction that was rewarding. You know, my her and her husband, uh, you know, they they loved loved the art I did with them. He was like, "Wow!" He was like, "It was like wow," uh, you know, helping them see. Hey, you guys are beautiful, you know. <laughs> it's like it's like, you know, and not every day they get to, you know, not every day we get to get dressed up or, you know, get all dialed up, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, definitely. Yeah. Have you thought of printing out your chosen artwork and di- displaying them in the ga- in the artwork? Um, what do you call these things? Um, the gallus, like the gallus. Yeah, yeah. Besides, so if I get, you know, anybody ever gets interested and actually wants to invite me to one. Besides that, besides that, Hmong, uh the one for the Hmong women community. Um, that that was the only one I had. It was like, and I felt like I said that was, I felt big to me. Mm. You know, and, um, I I kind of threw my uh, my friend May because the, there's other reasons that that you know i kind of drew her because she's out of respect she's she was a cancer survivor mm. uh you know she keeps my uh my, my boy in check my my brother my monk brother <laughs> he, <laughs> he keeps them keeps them in line and keeps them positive <laughs> and uh she had to do uh, so much you know you know as a mother uh mother wife and you know surviving you know struggling with cancer and she overcame it 
So to me, she's Bless. a super superwoman. Yeah. yeah, you have a lot of soul, dude. Very uh, kind. Yeah. It's you know the soul I have, like I said, I've, it's thankful for the right people in my life because I mm-hmm. almost went down that wrong path. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, it, it, that wrong path is just you know one step to the left, right, <laughs> or one step to the right. It's just uh, I, I made it. You know, my life wasn't perfect either. So I got in a lot of trouble. You know, I shoot, I've even been in jail. I've been, you know, I, I lived that whole, you know, Southeast Asian gang life in a way and uh, overcame things like that. You know, but Detroit's a little different when it comes. I talk about the gang life over here and stuff like that. It's family. Hmm. Like all my, all my brothers and stuff like that. I still, you know, we, we didn't we didn't talk about doing no dirt or anything like that. We talked we didn't try to hurt nobody. It was all about protecting each other. Hmm. It was all about loving each other. Always making sure we we stand for each other. It's like ain't, ain't no little ain't nobody else is gonna you know let we ain't gonna let nobody else fuck with us because yeah you know, yeah because hmm. it's 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 happening now a lot of <laughs> a lot of uh you know in in America right now or the United States is like. You know, we're getting targeted for other things, you know, and we're, you know, we're not Chinese. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things is like, but to everybody outside, you know, well, me and you, uh, me and you, we got probably get Chinese or Mexican, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> our dark skin are, you know, they don't know what to, to call us. Uh, they don't sometime. care. Yeah. That's, they, you, you're good enough. You look enough. You look Chinese enough. Yeah, it's like they don't want that uh, the history lesson. It's like, oh, okay, I would just, you know, all right, you're Asian. That's good enough. All right, I don't want to argue with you. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Man, this has been such a great conversation. Before we close out, I want to ask you one more question, if you don't mind. What are the most important lessons you've learned in life through creating art? Creating art? Uh believe in yourself more because I almost gave up on it. I, was like, I didn't, I didn't think uh, I, you know, right now I'm just going to see how, where it goes. But if it wasn't for, like I said, my daughter, I would have just gave up on it. I, I didn't think it was, I think it was bullshit. I, I didn't want to be a hypocrite because I'm putting, I'm trying to push her in art school. I can't tell her that. Uh, Cause just somebody told me a long time ago that art was bullshit, you know? But it's everywhere now, you know. It's in the background of you right now. <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. uh, it, it's, it's all a part of life, you know. Even if it's not doesn't involve digital, it's music or it's it's something. It, just find. Uh, everybody's an artist. You just got to find what your. What's, you know, what's your art? Mm, wise word from wise man again, Drew. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much for this. It's been uh, such a pleasure. Thank you, too. Uh, like I said, this is not normal. I, I guess I do talk a lot. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Have a good evening. All right. You, too. I'll uh, Keep in touch. Thank you. For sure. Bye. Bye. Again, Drew, thank you for coming on the podcast. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, listeners, for listening. This is Aaron Deliosa for An Immigrant's Life. I'll see you guys later.